here with UCLA head coach, Chip Kelly. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing great. I know, Coach. Uh, I want to start with this. You got Hawaii, you got LSU, you got Fresno State. There are no gimmies on this non-conference schedule. No. Do you look at your athletic director and say, hey, can we do something about this? No. I mean, you want to play the best. Right. So I think it's a, it's a great challenge before you go into league play. I've always thought that the, the out-of-conference schedule is something that um, – Helps you when you get into league play. You know, you, if you go out there and you you line up against a couple cupcakes and um, your starters don't play past the first quarter, then all of a sudden you get to your first league game and you got to extend it out and play four full quarters. And I don't know if you're ready for that. So um, we embrace it and we're excited about the opportunity. You have one of my favorite non-conference games on the schedule, Houston mm -hmm. LSU. I understand it's one game for you and one game for your team. Mm -hmm. But what could a win do for the perception of your program? You know, we're not concerned with perceptions. We're concerned if, if we do get an opportunity to play against a really good LSU team, um, you know, what, what that's going to look like for us. So we always get prepared for our opponents the same way. We play nameless, faceless opponents. Um, it's about the standard that we are going to play ourselves to, and, and that's how we ultimately judge ourselves. And that standard has been rising each and every year. Like mm -hmm. I'm looking at statistics and I'm looking at the trends, and there's going to be some folks that I feel will tell you that you're sneaking up on somebody, but I don't get that sense from you, and I certainly don't get that sense from the last three years mm -hmm. watching your program. What do you think you're waiting to see to pop from your players and from your program to get there? Yeah, I just think it's our next opportunity. You know, we, we our depth has changed. You know, when we took over, we didn't we were under 60 for scholarship players, and now we're finally back up over 80. Um, mm -hmm. I think part of that is COVID. You know, a bunch of guys coming back from last year's team. Uh, we had 115 kids in spring practice. You know, my first year there, we had 60 kids in spring practice. So the numbers have changed. The depth has changed. So it's a, just a, an opportunity to get those guys on the field and see what they can do. So, Coach, I'm going to pivot to what I think are some fun questions. So mm -hmm. By all means, please have fun with them. Uh, can you tell us three nice things about your rival? They live in an unbelievable city, number one. Uh, they're very close to the beach, not as close as some other schools, but they're close, number two. Um, and the head coach is a nice guy. I will take that, Coach. I appreciate that. Uh, you, you've seen the jersey, so I will ask this question. Mm -hmm. Which fictional football player, movie football player, would you add to UCLA's roster if you could? Oh, that's a great question. Mm. <laughs> Um, maybe Willie Beeman. I think he would have been fun to coach. Okay. So he's got some skills. He he would have been he would have been fun to coach. Hey man, the way they ran that option. Oh yeah. Hey, with six seconds left. You calling yeah. that play with six seconds left? If Willie Beeman's my quarterback, I am. <laughs> I like that. I like that. No, I can get behind that, coach. Uh, man, I should have wore the Beeman jersey. Yeah. I got it at the house. So, coach, a question I've been asking all the coaches, and uh, it's been really revealing. What's the last job you had before going into coaching full time? I was teaching, so I was at the the high school level. Mm -hmm. um, actually, taught at a youth prison um, in phys ed, you know, and was coaching high school ball at the time before I made the jump to go to college football. What'd you learn about coaching phys ed in a youth detention center? Oof. That. Uh, there are a lot of kids that need a lot of guidance, mm. um, and they need a lot of positive role models in their life that um, can show them that there's a right way to, to do things. And sometimes kids make a misstep, but that shouldn't define them for the rest of their lives. How has that helped you in your career in these top-tier programs and even coaching the NFL level? I, I think it gives you an understanding of where everybody kind of comes from, mm. you know, and that everybody has a backstory, um, and that. Um, our job as coaches is to create an environment where they have an opportunity to be successful and then get out of their way and let them do that. But um, you know, I think that's what I think coaching is all about, um, giving guys a chance to, to show what they can do. Right on, Coach. Appreciate that. Uh, so I have the audacity to put together what I thought was the best all-time Pac-12 offense and defense. You're looking at the offense first. Tell me who I left off. And you can hand one to me if you need to. Troy Aikman. Okay. Why has Troy got to be on that team? Well, he was number one pick of the draft. And then he's a multiple Super Bowl champion. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. And I think he works for Fox. Well, so does <laughs> Matt. <laughs> so does Matt. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. He, I, I just okay. I would have had Troy on there. All right. I'll get that from you.
See, I'm an Okie, and I'm inclined to tell UCLA, you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I know Coach Donahue would have said that. Yeah. That's a good lineup. Okay. I would have. Now, I don't know as a – are you saying these – as they played in the Pac-12 or their, their total as careers? As they played in the Pac-12. Okay, because yeah. if you said their pro careers, I may throw Richard Sherman in there. Well, it's a totally different team. Yeah, I know it's a totally different team. <laughs> yeah, no, but you'd be right. He went with right. some, some young backers, though. There's – and Scooby and Evan. Tackling machines. I know. You've seen that offense. I need guys that can put dudes on the ground. Yeah. Okay. I'm not, I'm not saying that. All right, all right. Cushing was a pretty good backer now. Was he uh, was? There's some cats in there, but that's a good list. You got Brewski and Haloti, so you, I don't think you can argue with that. You can't argue with Suggs; he's the all-time sack leader, and 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 then Troy Palomato and Weddle. That, that's a good group. That's a good list. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. UCLA head coach Chip Kelly. Thank you so much for the time, sir. Appreciate your shirt. Okay, I'm here with UCLA players Dorian Thompson, Robinson, Quantrez Knight. Guys, how you doing? Doing good. How are you? Right on. Microphone's up. Microphone's up. I want to hear you when you speak. All right. All right. Go. Dorian, y'all got one of the coolest games on the schedule for me. When you play LSU, how much are you looking forward to that? You know, that's the, that's the game everybody's talking about. That's mm. the game everybody wants to go to. So, you know, we know, it, we know it's at stake and we know it's, uh, what's coming. And uh, I think we're going to be prepared for it. All right. Q, how you feel about playing <laughs> LSU? Um, well, me um, – I think if we just, you know what I mean, just do what we do, you know what I mean, just coming to practice every day, you know what I mean, giving our all, um, and not, not not practicing just because it's LSU, you know what I mean, just taking the game as if it was any any other opponent, you know what I mean, just coming to practice and, and doing exactly, you know what I mean, um, what, 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 what we've been told, you know what I think we'll be all right. Dorian, having been the quarterback of this program for, mm -hmm. we're going on year four here, right, yes. as a starter. Yes, sir. How have you seen – the program continue to get better each and every year? Because I feel like y'all going to sneak up on some people when y'all been building toward this for four years. No, yeah, exactly. And the, uh, Chip's done a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, he's brought in the right guys, such as Quantrez. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we finally got a good team, uh, a very established team and a, and a mature team. So I'm excited. Q, who picking off Dorian in practice? <laughs> um, well, that that'll, that'll definitely be me. I, I get in with a little bit. Um, but... <laughs> I can't, keep it together. Can't, even, can't even say that with a serious face. <laughs> no, no, no. This is not about us right now. This is not about us because we know what happened. Like, we, we, we not about to make this about us. We're going to go against LSU. I right just, I, you look, I, I'm. I literally, like, I literally do it to this guy every day. Yeah. I'm, he's a headache. He's a problem. Okay. All right. But he's, he's a problem. problem too, he's yeah. a problem. Yeah, he's a problem. Right. No, he's a problem. We can go with that. Okay. We can work with that. I appreciate that. <laughs> I tried to create no fiction here in this little interview not in, with y'all. Not in here, man. Nah, he's like, <laughs> when y'all start camp, that's what's yeah, my next Friday. question. Oh, Friday. Yeah, Friday. Okay, so you getting it in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't want to remember this. Yep, as soon as that whistle blow, it's all in <laughs> crack. So what have you learned about yourself in these past three years? Um, let's see. You know, really just the process mm. um, and going through the process has it's taught me a lot, uh, you know, of, of how to grow, um, how to actually be a leader, how to be a quarterback, um, and all the things that it takes to win football games on Saturdays and Sundays. So, on, And Sundays. And I see Sundays. how you snuck that in there. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Mm -hmm. All right. I want to pivot to what I think are some fun questions. Akil, I'm going to start with you. Mm. Who was your favorite past college football player? Um, uh, my favorite player would, um, past player would definitely be, um, Sean Taylor. Um, you know, I, we both plays, um, safety and right. I feel like he, he plays the game with a, a, a great passion. You know what I mean? A, a passion that, you know what I mean? You're supposed to play football with. Um, I watch documentaries, you know what I mean? Um, people had great things to say about Sean Taylor all the time. Um, um, I remember watching a, a clip, um, my, my, I remember watching a clip um, the, the punter at some team, I forgot what team it was, but he took off running and Sean Taylor just came down and blasted him, man. I was a kid then. I was like, man, I want to play football like this guy one day. And, um, you know, I feel like just watching him, um, it, it really formed me into who I am today. You know what I mean? I feel like we play very similar 
um, you know what I mean, with passion, with violence, with um, just, just what he brings to the table and, and to his team um, as far on the football end. So Sean Taylor is definitely a player that I, you know what I mean, um, grew up watching and, and wanted to be like. Right on. Dorian, who you got? Mine's going to have to be Braxton Miller over at Ohio State when we play QB. Yeah, I know. Okay. My, mom's a, my mom's a Michigan grad, a Michigan fan, oof, doing through. Oof, oof. Exactly. So every weekend we was watching the, the big game at the big house. So, um, you know, being able to watch him and watch him play and how electric he was uh, just made me want to be a quarterback. So. Right on, putting people in the spin cycle. All right, mm -hmm. so I put together what I thought was the best all-time Pac-12 offense and defense. Okay. Dorian, you got the offense. Q, you got the defense. Tell me who I left off. Uh, a lot of guys. Okay, Dorian, tell me who. <laughs> tell me who. Uh, well, we got, I don't, I don't see Troy on here. Troy. I don't see Troy Aikman. No, you don't see Troy yeah, Aikman. I, I okay, yeah, okay. I Why does Troy need to be on that list? I mean, to me personally, he's the best quarterback to come out of UCLA. Okay. Thus far. Thus far, I will say that. I love this confidence. I love this. Uh, but yeah, Troy is, Troy is definitely a guy. Right on. Troy is definitely a guy. Q, what you see? Um, let's see. I don't see the guy, Quantrez Knight yeah, from I UCLA. Say, I, don't, I don't see. I don't see that. Guy I don't either. see him on him, but <sighs> someone else I don't see is um. I mean, all of these are great names. Mm. Um, but I'm not really a a huge. I'm, I'm not really familiar with Pac-12. But if I were to say, um, I mean, being that I'm new to the conference, right, so. Right, but right, if right. I were to say, um, I mean, you were missing someone. I say a Dory Jackson. Okay. Um, from you from USC. Right. Um, Dory Jackson. He was. I mean. All around player, you know what I mean, play all, both sides of the ball, you know what I mean, was very electric in, in the return game. Um, feel like he's definitely deserved a spot on this on this um all time all time poster. Now I'll take that. Troy Aikman from Dorian and Dory Jackson from Q. All right, Quantrez Knight, Dorian Thompson Robinson. Thank y'all so much for taking the time. Thank you, RJ. Hey, Kim folk, I appreciate you for watching. Subscribe here and ring the bell so you don't miss the latest upload to the channel. Also, be sure to watch more videos here, like FS1 Studio Shows and the best from Fox Sports and Fox Sports Digital.